teams are on the back half of conference play with March implications on the line as we welcome in Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams. Kim, let's start at the top of the league and look at DePaul. The Blue Demons lead the conference at 10-1 and one, and in Monday night's NCAA tournament projections of the top 16 seeds, the DePaul Blue Demons checked in at a 14 seed. What do you make of what the Blue Demons have done so far this season? Well, I think anything that with DePaul and coach Doug Bruno, the word I always think of is consistency. Hey, hey, this is Dan on camera. I'm counting to 20, starting with 20. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That was 20. 20 by 20, 20, two zero that makes 20 um also happening today there's a basketball game uh DePaul versus Seton Hall Seton Hall
From historic Walsh Gymnasium in South Orange, New Jersey, this is Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The 14th ranked DePaul Blue Demons coming into town to face the Seton Hall Pirates. Sean St. Jacques, Phil Stern, Ashley Lyotis on hand inside Walsh Gym. We'll talk to Ashley in just a few moments. Coach, it's supposed to be a sellout. A nationally ranked team is in town. Two of the best in the Big East going toe to toe. Both playing at a really high level right now. Should be a fast paced ball game today. You got some stars playing really well. You got role players on both teams playing really well. Looking for some really good Big East basketball today. We're excited. We're going to have a lot of fun today. DePaul and Seton Hall going out. We'll take a look at the last matchup between these two. A late DePaul surge in the second half, Bill, was the difference. So many strong players for DePaul team that doesn't play a lot of players, but they play extremely hard. That's why they're top of the conference. They don't go very deep. They play really fast. They're in better shape than most teams that they play against. They're second in the nation in three-pointers made per game. They're tough to guard. Seton Hall runs a fast pace. They ran a fast pace against DePaul last time, but kind of faded down the stretch. Got to limit their turnovers. Turned it over 21 times last time at DePaul in the 85-68 loss. Look for them to control the tempo a little more today. Players to watch, Phil. We got a couple of dandies here. We start with DePaul's Kelly Campbell. What can she do on a basketball court? Look, she's your prototypical leader in college basketball. It's her last game in the state of New Jersey today. Look for her to have a big game. She stuffs the stat sheets. Eight points, eight rebounds, almost six assists per game. New Jersey native has apparently 25 of her family and friends here. She's going to be excited for this one for sure. On the other side for Seton Hall, none other than Shadeen Samuels. Was a preseason national player to watch. She's lived up to the billing this season. Preseason Big East Player of the Year playing that way now. Has really rounded back into form. The form we saw her in at the end of last year. She's tough to guard, isolations, post ups, she's getting to the foul line. Players to watch, stars to watch, two teams to watch in the Big East. Should be a lot of fun in Seton Hall and DePaul. And it's coming up next from Walsh on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power gun. St. Jacques, the coach Phil Stern back inside Walsh Gymnasium getting his set for 14th ranked DePaul and Seton Hall here inside a packed house in Walsh Gym. Let's go to the third member of our team, Ashley Lyotis on the sideline. That is a very short turnaround for both of these teams this weekend. Both of these teams are coming off of a very strong win on Friday night in their respective games. And today in front of a packed house, both of these teams are going to be looking for some offensive production. As far as DePaul goes, it is Kelly Campbell leading that team in assists with 138. Head coach Doug Bruno tells me he wants to lead the nation in assists. Right now they are coming in fourth in that. And over on the other side at Seton Hall, it is Alexis Lewis leading the team right now. Since Creighton, she has scored in double digits. And head coach Bazella told me about her that he sat down with her and said, what can we do to get you to play better? She said, it's all on me. After that Marquette game on the road, she said, coach, it's all on me. I need to do better. And she has done that since then. Guys. Ashley, thank you very much. Sean St. Jacques, Phil Stern, coach. We're going to look at the starting lineups here, starting with the DePaul Blue Demons. Obviously, 11-1 in the conference, 21-3. Overall, we mentioned Kelly Campbell, but Shante Stonewall, the senior, Coach Doug Bruno told us earlier this week, she's been a really big part of what they like to do offensively. Excellent offensive rebounder. Likes to drive it right, get to the basket. Does a lot of little things. You don't need a lot of run a lot of plays for her to get her buckets. Really strong lineup for DePaul. They only play six or seven deep, but they play extremely hard on both ends. Seton Hall, of course, starting Lauren Park Lane as a freshman at point guard. Alexis Lewis is coming off a career-high 28 points in a win over Marquette on Friday. You know, they were looking for her to get hot. She got hot Friday night to lead him to a big home win to set up a tremendous matchup today. And a tremendous crowd on hand as well. Close to a sellout inside Walsh. Fans still filing in as the tip is about to take place inside historic 
Walsh Gym. 14th ranked DePaul and Seton Hall. Underway from Walsh Gym on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey. Seton Hall are in the home whites going from left to right on your screens. And the first place, DePaul Blue Demons, 11-1 in the Big East, are in their home dark blues. Right away, they're looking to isolate Elmore on the perimeter with a, a, a post up for Samuels. They didn't get it, swing the ball. Shadeen Samuels, preseason conference player of the year, kicks it out to Alexis Lewis. Five to shoot for the Pirates. Park Lane on the drive, a kick. Alesh fires and hits a three. Huge bucket. No good. Alexis Lewis had the rebound but lost it. Campbell comes up with it for the Blue Demons. Three pointer. Too strong. Stonewall the offensive rebound, and it's going to be a foul going the other way, a push in the back, and the Pirates get the ball about a minute into the first quarter. And right away you see one of the strengths of DePaul is three-point shooting, and then going to get the offensive rebound. They average 15 offensive rebounds a game. Seton Hall plays without a center, so they're going to have to block out, and the guards are going to have to rebound. Alash in there defensively for Shante Stonewall. It's an interesting move by Coach Tony Bazell, but seemed confident when we talked to him before the game that that was going to be a matchup that he could be confident in her doing the defensive end. We take a look at the Seton Hall keys to the game. Mentioned it, guard the three-point line. That's got to be the number one priority. Got to guard the three-point line. DePaul makes 11 three-pointers a game, second in the nation. And one of the best assist teams as well around in women's college basketball. Desiree Elmore from the elbow knocks it down. Five early pirate points on the board. And again, getting point paints is huge for them. She knocked down the mid-range jumper. Coach Bazella told us if Elmore and Shadeen don't score, we don't win. Good start for Desiree Elmore. Tough fadeaway jump shot, but DePaul gets a kick out offensive rebound. Stonewall, yes, for three. And again, point off the offensive boards are huge. Seton Hall cannot give up too many of them tonight. Park Lane, little too rushed on the offensive end. That's a turnover, and DePaul gets it back. Lauren Park Lane, a freshman, earned her spot through her confidence early in the season, and Coach Mazzella says she was able to talk the talk early on. Now she can walk the walk as well. Take a look at the DePaul keys to the game. Mention Elmore and Samuels. Another three-pointer there on the far side. Lexi held on the board. Yeah, again, the course, a little more than that. And again, well. Lewis had a great night the other night, but you got to contain Samuels and Elmore. They can go off for 40 between the two of them on any night. And that offensive blast thing that you brought up, Coach, that's going to be big as well. DePaul's so good getting second-chance opportunities. Elmore to Samuels underneath. No good, but a foul is called. And Shadeen Samuels ahead of the line for two free throws. Yeah, DePaul averages 15 0 boards a game, which is a huge number. It's demoralizing to the opponent to give up second and third opportunities. Shadeen Samuel from Ossining, New York, has had double figure point totals in nine of the 12 Big East games this season. However, one of those games that she didn't have double figures was against DePaul in the previous meeting. Knocks down the first free throw. Nine points on four of 11 shooting. They held her pretty much in check for most of that game. That ended up being pretty key in the third and fourth quarter. She's a different player right now. Yeah. She's playing at a really high level, playing at that preseason Big East Player of the Year level, and back to where she was last year when she was first team all-conference. Knocks down both free throws. Pirates back in front early on first quarter, 7-6. to six. Shate Stonewall against Olesh. Tough shot. Olesh defends it well. Offensive rebound and a foul on the way up. And that's where the Blue Demons can hurt you. And it's something we talked about. And on each possession right now, DePaul has got an offensive rebound. That was off a post move. Normally, they're going to get them off of, of three-point shots, which is longer rebounds. Right there, they got it into the post. One post move, one shot, one offensive rebound. Seton Hall's got to tighten that up early. Sonia Morris, the offensive rebound sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. And she knocks down the first. Church out there as well for DePaul, number three in blue. And she's had some opportunities early on to run things offensively for the Blue Demons. And again, they don't go very deep. This is who you're going to see on the court most of the night, but they're going to play 94 feet. Is that worth that, that work ethic, that DePaul ball that was coined back in 2014 by the great LaChina Robinson during the NCAA tournament? Coach Bruno told us it was after they beat Duke in the NCAA tournament that year that that phrase kind of got started by LaChina. Long three-pointer far side from Lauren Park Lane is short. Blue Demons are not going to waste any time. They get down the floor so quickly, putting pressure on the defense immediately. Great pass by Morris. Campbell out wide. Stonewall a three. It's good. Rattles it in. Quick moving ball on the offensive end, and DePaul is up 11-7. to seven. And again, Stonewall shoots under 30% from three. That's about, you know, the third thing in her arsenal. But she's knocking them down. They'll be hard to beat. They got her a good look that time. Lauren Park Lane controls for the Pirates. That's picked off 
Deja Church a scoop and a score through the contact. And it's 13 to seven, DePaul in a flash. And again, one of our keys was DePaul turning their defense into offense. Seton Hall tried to get into a set. Olesh, two for two from downtown. Great job getting the ball inside to Shadeen. Shadeen, great kick out for the three. That's thrown away. Lewis up ahead to Lauren Park Lane. It's a one on three. She's gonna wisely pull it back out and find Samuels for a triple. That's good. Great, deci game. great decision by the freshman, right? Numbers weren't there, flip it back to your senior, all Big East player for three. What a pace this game's at right now. It's turning into a track meet, 13 all, 6-10 in, 6-10 to go in the first quarter. That one's off the mark from Morris. And it's gonna be Pirate Ball with 6.08 to play in the first. And again, both teams want this pace. Almost a battle of attrition when you play Sunday after you play Friday night. Both teams don't go very deep either. We'll see who wins that battle. There's Coach Bazella, his seventh season as the Pirate head coach. Always puts up a great fight when DePaul comes to town, although DePaul has won 20 of the 25 in the history of, the, of this meeting. And of course, the new style that was implemented last season has continued to get better, that fast pace, but of course DePaul enjoys that as well. What a move inside by Elmore, and she flexes off the two-point basket. Pirates up 15-13. Again, the lefty gets it at the right elbow. One shot fake, drive it one dribble left, shoot it. Great job. Stonewall, guarded by Olesh, pulls up and hits. What a start for Shante Stonewall. Eight points already, and it's tied at 15. Olesh almost dropped that one on the feed from Jackson, who checked in for the Pirates. Elmore back to work. Turned into trouble and traveled. That's a turnover. And again, pretty good D at the other end by Alesh. I mean, Stonewall knocked down a contested mid-range jumper. Alesh was right there to guard her. Right there, just Elmore uh, getting a little ahead of herself. You're watching Seton Hall basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Off the elbow to go to work all day. Kiara Dahlman, the junior from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, checks in. Gets the ball in the paint, kicks it back out towards Kelly Campbell, the senior from Wall, New Jersey, 25 of her family and friends at least here at the game today. Great baseline drive by Sonia Morris, and DePaul's back up by two. DePaul Maya Jackson taking over at the point. DePaul man to man. Uh, last time they went some zone, the last three quarters of the game against Seton Hall. Let's see when they go to that tonight. Lewis had 28 points in the Friday win over Marquette here at Walsh. Jackson baseline jumper in and out, and the rebound by Campbell. Church for DePaul, crossover on Lewis. Lovely hesitation move through the contact and she'll go to the line for two free throws. And you called it, great hesitation move in transition. DePaul gets the ball up the court so quickly. What a fast pace to this game in the early stages. 4.35 to go in the first, DePaul up by two on the Big East Digital Network here at Walsh Gym. You're watching Senior Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. 
a diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. do. 35 to go in the first quarter inside historic Walsh Gym. Sean St. Jacques, the coach, Phil Stern. Ashley Lyotis is patrolling the sideline for us here inside Walsh Gym. 14th ranked DePaul up by a deuce at the moment. Series history has favored the Blue Demons in this Big East rivalry. To say the least, mentioned it earlier, DePaul 20 and 5 all time. Obviously won the last meeting back in Jan uh, on January 10th. Pirates broke a six game skid with a win in Chicago last season, but they're looking for their first home win over DePaul since 2015. Fast pace to start this game as well. It's been exciting so far, Coach. Both teams going up and down, looking to score quickly. If not, they're going to get the ball inside. They're going to isolate their best players to go one-on-one. -on -one. Who's going to limit their turnovers? Again, can Seton Hall keep DePaul off the offensive boards? They haven't been able to do it uh, early on. They have three already. Yeah, three turnovers already for the Pirates, two for DePaul. Deja Church, the junior from Michigan at the line, short on the first free throw. And again, transfer uh, from Michigan, played for uh, one of my former opponents when I was in the Division II level, uh, Kim Barnes. Uh, and again, just a perfect fit to the system here for Doug Bruno. It's one of the keys to keeping this culture going for Coach Bruno. He knows how to pick him in recruiting. He knows who's going to fit his style. And he's stuck to it for so many, 34 years now, obviously, as a, as a default Blue Demon coach. Yeah, over 700 wins. Yeah, I mean, a legend. stand for something or stand for nothing, right? He knows who he is on how they play, and they're only going to recruit a certain kind of player to their system. Pirates inbound it to Maya Jackson. Gets it up the floor for Seton Hall. Of course, Saint, uh, excuse me, DePaul coming off a big win over St. John's on Friday. They came back from 16 down in the third quarter. Johnny's looked like they had it wrapped up. and. So again, the Blue Demons never gave up. Talked to Coach Bruno about it yesterday, and he just said, listen, nothing we said to them. They just knew we had to get back in the game somehow, and they found a way, and they, they pulled it off in a tough place to go get a win in the Big East in Queens at uh, Carnesecca. Part of it is the winning culture. They're so used to winning, they're never out of the game. All that strong on that corner three-pointer, now two of three. And every right to take that shot after knocking down the first two. Three-pointer on the other end. Short, fight for the rebound. Desiree Elmore comes out with it. And here come the Pirates with Maya Jackson, three on three. Good kick out. Lewis, far corner, it's a triple. And it's good. 28 points, last time out for Alexis Lewis. She's off the mark, tied at 18. Jackson did a great job pushing. She spotted up in the corner. Good kick for the three. Great physical move inside by Dolman. And the Blue Demons are back up by two. Can't celebrate any buckets today. You gotta get back. You gotta be able to guard the perimeter and the post because DePaul seems to be throwing it inside in transition right now. Kick ball. It's gonna stay with Seton Hall as Lexi Held comes back in for the Blue Demons. Lauren Park Lane back in for Co Seton Hall. Coach Bazella talked a lot about Lexi Held, who, who could really get hot, make threes in bunches. They need to know where she is, lock and trail in all their sets. Seems like when we talked to, to Coach Bazella, he had so many things that they had to worry about. Just shows you how tough it is to prepare for DePaul week in and week out. Not that it's not tough to prepare for all these other teams, but it seems like there's a laundry list of things you have to worry about when you play the Blue Demons. Park Lane almost lost it, did lose it out of bounds. She actually slid onto the out of bounds line on the baseline, and that's gonna be a turnover. It's DePaul basketball with 3.18 to play in the opening quarter. And that's a turnover that's not gonna hurt Seton Hall. It's a dead ball turnover. They gotta take the ball out of bounds. Everybody's back. Demons bring it up the floor. Kelly Campbell, the senior again from Wall, New Jersey, and 16 rebounds to her career high in the win over St. John's on Friday. Just what a season, what a career she's had under Doug Bruno. Dolman going back to work. What a great move inside, gets the roll. Smooth turn and twist to the 10. Great little dribble drop step by her off the left block there. Interesting matchup now. Samuels is guarding Stonewall, so let's see if that affects her on the offensive end. Elmore with Campbell on her. Good vision to find Jackson, never afraid to fire, but it's too strong. Weak side, rebound is fought for and retained by Held, and here come the Blue Demons again. Up ahead to Bajelka, it is an offensive foul on the drive inside. And Desiree Elmore is never afraid to put her body on the line. And she did a great job getting back, guarding the basket. There's the drive, they're gonna kick it to the corner, but I'm gonna draw the charge first and she does a great job as an experienced player.
not just worrying about offense, getting back, helping them on the defensive end. One way to try to slow down the pace, right? Get yeah. your body in front yeah. if you can, if you get there in time. Slow it down. they got to <laughs> clean the floor a little bit. We'll take it out of bounds. There you go. Maya Jackson will take it out of bounds. Look at Doug Bruno, of course, mentioned it. 34 years at the helm of the Blue Demons. Number of sweet 16 appearances, of course, in the NCAA tournament. And, of course, the top 16 came out recently yep. for the NCAA tournament. His team, of course, right in there in the top 16, as you might expect, with the AP poll having them at 14 this week as well. And again, a couple of tough losses, right? Oregon State, uh, Connecticut. No shame in those teams. Looks like a foul's gonna be going the other way. Alexis Lewis went down, going up for that rebound. Stonewall got there first. And the foul's gonna be against Alexis Lewis, I believe, for trying to go over the back. Seton Hall bench not happy with that call right there. Uh, but again, slows the game down a little bit. They'll regroup, they get to get back, set their defense. Three fouls on Alexis Lewis. She has all of the team fouls in this first quarter. That's going to send her right to the bench. That, that ended up pretty quickly, huh? And again, basketball is such a funny game. She goes for 28 on Friday night. Right now she's in foul trouble. Going to have to sit the rest of the half. DePaul turns it back over, though. A travel on the baseline by Held. And the sophomore gives it right back to the Pirates with two to play in the first quarter. A little full court pressure here. Full court man by DePaul. Just looking to turn the dribble a little bit. Not going to trap out of it. Park Lane will run the show again for Seton Hall. Shadeen Samuels looked all the way around, back to Lauren Park Lane. Good screen by Femi Funis, who just checked in for the Pirates. They get it to her inside through traffic, and she does draw the foul. Didn't look like she had too much space there to operate when but she gets the, the foul call. But Seton Hall, what they did is they ran a ball screen. DePaul switching the ball screens, went it right to the block, threw it right in, drew the foul. Lane had a little trouble getting that in, but finds Desiree Elmore on the baseline. Maya Jackson always can get hot in a hurry off the bench for Seton Hall. Great three-point shooter, Femi Funes with seven to shoot. Pulls up, it's short. And DePaul grabs the rebound, Kelly Campbell. Quickly up ahead, Shante Stonewall thought about it, will now take the three and hits it. Boy, she is red hot out of the gates. Four of five from the field, 11 points, and there's a foul on the inbounds. DePaul gets the ball down the court so fast. I don't think I've seen anything like it. I mean, it's one or two passes. They're in a ready position to shoot a three. They're sending someone to the block and throwing it inside. They're really, they're really clicking on all cylinders right now. And of that four of five, Stonewall, perfect three of three from deep. She's picking her spots well so far. She really is, and for someone that came into the game shooting under 30% from the three-point line, that probably wasn't at the top of the scattering report for Seton Hall. You'd rather her shoot a, shoot a three than be on the block. Lauren Park Lane at the free throw line, in and out on the first. Freshman from Wilmington, Delaware. Again, last offensive possession for Seton Hall. Samuels or Elmore didn't touch the ball. Look for Tony to really run their offense through the two of them for most of the game. Couple of pair missed at the line for Lauren Park Lane. Tough on Dahlman there, kick out, three is short. Fight for the rebound, Stonewall taps it up right to herself, puts it back, no good, fight for the rebound again, foul against DePaul underneath. And we talked about the offensive rebounding of DePaul. They're relentless, tipping it, tipping it, then grabbing it, going up. They went over the back there, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that Coach Bruno doesn't care. He wants them to be aggressive. He might not have liked the call, but he likes the aggressiveness. I was going to say, he's got a smile on his face, but I think that's because of the call, not necessarily yeah. the effort on his team's exactly. offensive rebounding at the moment. Although Shante Stonewall needed uh, just two of her arms to beat two players going for that offensive rebound. Yeah, you know, How she, good was that? She's so long and athletic, uh, and she does a great job of really understanding where the rebound might go, and she anticipates really well. Amy Funis at the line, makes the first. This is going to be the X factor for Seton Can they make some of these free throws more consistently? Obviously, a pair missed by Lauren Park Lane. But Funes gets the two points right back. And they've gotten good contributions from Funes and, and Alesh here, putting up some points for them that maybe they weren't counting on for this game. Eight points between them so far. A couple of Alesh threes have been pretty crucial. Blocked three by Desiree Elmore. But DePaul keeps it alive. Short, Elmore has the rebound, but she traveled, and that's a good call by the officials. Elmore came from about 20 feet away to fly and block that shot right there. 
they understand what a great three-point shooter held is. And she did a good job contesting the shot and then blocking the shot. Did everything but put the ball on the floor right there at the end. Exactly. Quick inbounds play for a two for DePaul. Again, executing your baseline out of bounds plays are so important these days, getting points off your baseline out of bounds. And Coach Pizzella told us they just put a ton of pressure on you. Even after they score a basket, they're relentless at times to Paul on the defensive end specifically, especially after they score. Now they have a seven-point lead, 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. There's an eight-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Lauren Park Lane controls. Jackson thought about it, three to shoot, step back, three-pointer, short. Stormwall has the rebound. She lost it, thought there was going to be a shot clock violation. It wasn't called. The clock stopped for a moment. Jackson up no good. Elmore fouled, 2.6 seconds to go, and something happened with the clock there that they might have to review. There was only a seven-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So the shot clock buzzer goes off. Everyone stops, thinking it's the end of the quarter. Samuels made a good play there. Elmore capitalizes, and this is an important two shots here. Because, I mean, it's, there's a big difference here with momentum going into the second quarter. I think you might have hit that right on the head because Shante Stonewall is thinking, it's over. I got the ball. Yep. Quarter's done, although Elmore can't cash in on the first. But then she ends up giving it right back to Jackson. Can't make the layup, but it leads to the foul call. Exactly. And, and you know, when you build up fouls at the end of the quarter, that's always a big thing as well. DePaul can get the ball down here at 2.6 and get a three off very easily. Elmore, though, does get a big free throw there. 2.6 seconds. Left in the quarter, Stonewall will gonna get a chance to heave it. Half court at the buzzer is short. And that'll end a very fast-paced, up and down first quarter here in South Orange. DePaul, though, has control at the moment, 27-21, as we head to the second quarter inside Walsh Gym. You're watching Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Ranked to Paul Blue Demon, Sean St. Jack, the coach, Phil Stern on hand inside a packed Walsh gym on the campus of Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey. What a start for DePaul. We look at their national ranks. Boy, I mean, it's almost an unblemished record. Second in so many big categories. Three pointer field goals per game. They average 11 per game. They've already got four so far today, coach. They average a lot of assists as well. Steals up there in the top five. As well, we mentioned you had it circled for me here, five rebounds as well. They're getting it on the offensive end specifically. Offensive rebounds have been crucial for them, but also sharing the basketball quickly on the offensive end. Yeah, they average about 19 assists per game. Uh, they average 11 three-pointers per game, 15 offensive rebounds per game. Players rank really high in a lot of those categories as well. Second quarter is underway. Long three-pointer from that far side is short, but Kelly Campbell on the offensive end, second chance. For DePaul Church, though, traveled as she tried to drive inside. DePaul gives it away. Six offensive rebounds now already yeah. uh, as we start the second quarter. 
And again, it's something that when they shoot threes, you're going to give up some long rebounds there. Lauren Park Lane just w was in good position. They just went over her back for that rebound. Elmore almost had it taken away. As I think that was Church who tried to reach in and grab that away from her. It's going to be side out for the Pirates. DePaul doing a really good job of not letting Seton Hall get into their sets, denying every entry pass. Great kick out by Funis. Swung around by Jackson Park Lane. Over Shadeen Samuels, a little high for Jackson. She corrals it. Funis on the low block. Nine to shoot for the Pirates. Jackson with five. Step back two-pointer is good. A great individual effort by Maya Jackson. And she's got that in her locker. It's a four-point game. And DePaul right back at him right here. Stonewall right on the block. Get it right into her. Eunice guarding her, Stonewall. How good is she? 15 early points, made it look easy off the glass. They, and, she, and they do a little a bit of everything on the offense right there. They pushed it, they threw it inside, they had a cutter going to the basket, and she makes a great post move. Six of eight from the field, three of three from deep. Elmore dribbled into traffic, kept it alive, but then threw it away. Let's send it over to our sideline reporter, Ashley Lyotis. Ashley? Hey guys, yeah, in between those quarters, I was listening in to each respective huddle and Coach Bruno, obviously not happy with the fouls that his team has committed so far. And that's really what this first quarter has been about. On the other side, Seton Hall, we saw Alexis Lewis go down in the first quarter with three fouls. Three fouls. Doubtful, we'll see her back until the second half. And of course, she is one of their strong offensive producers. So interested to see how this one's going to play out the rest of this first half, guys. As always, Ashley will check back with her later on in the broadcast. Three-pointer by Church is good. And it's been one of those things where DePaul is just getting it going from all ends of the offensive end of the floor at the moment. DePaul shooting well from three at the moment, getting what they want inside. And Shantae Stonewall has 15 points already. Pirates looking to answer with a three. It's no good from Jackson. And DePaul has the ball up by nine. And again, Church comes into the game at 26% from three. It's a shot that Seton Hall probably wants her to take. Lauren Park Lane with a steal, and she's fouled going up the floor by Church, and quickly, I believe that's going to be Church's first foul. But again, Lauren Coach Park Lane does the job there defensively. And Coach Bruno not happy with the foul. The women's basketball right now, five fouls per quarter, and you're shooting two shots. So to pick up a foul in the front court right there, the fouls just add up, and it's just a silly foul. And it's worth mentioning Alexis Lewis had three personal fouls in the first quarter of this game, so she's not going to be in there for a while for Seton Hall. That, low, that lowers the rotation a bit for Tony Bazella. Screen by Elmore Jackson on the kick. Some minutes here for Barbara Johnson, who's been a little under the weather this week. In and out on the three, got a great look. But it's in and out, up ahead quickly to Stonewall. What a move to get under Samuels in her contest, but it's no good. Good defense by Shadeen in the end there. Pirates working quickly, Lauren Park Lane. Oh my, yes and a foul. High off the glass and a chance at a three point play. She's a jet when she picks up the pace. She went the length of the court, nobody stopped the ball. They're worried about the three point shooters on the perimeter. Great chance for Barbara Johnson right here to step up, to pick up the slack for her. Alexis Lewis left off Friday night while she's in foul trouble. It'd be great to see her get hot for Seton Hall. That three went in and out. Barbara Johnson does average nine points in just over 22 minutes per game for the Pirates this season. Big three-point play there by Lauren Park Lane. And the Pirates are back within six points. And again, DePaul's picked up two quick fouls in this quarter. That adds up for you. I'm Coach Bruno is talking to his team about that. Maybe the referees also. Stovall is in the game for the Blue Demons. A bit of a dangerous pass over to Campbell who corrals it. Now Pirates ramping up the pressure a little bit. Morris tries and kicks, stolen away by Jackson. One on one, gets it to go. And in the blink of an eye, the Pirates are back within four and DePaul needs a timeout. Seton Hall went with a little half court trap, back to man, doing a good job of faking and retreating on the shooters. Capitalized at the other end. Media timeout inside Walsh Gym. The Pirates are picking up the pace. Four point game, DePaul on top on the Big East Digital Network as Maya Jackson is starting to turn up the tempo here inside Walsh. 
You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Alright, we gotta be all in. All in, alright? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. As you can see there, it's a packed house inside historic Walsh Gym on campus here at Seton Hall University. Sean St. John, Phil Stern, and Ashley Lyotis on hand for this big matchup in the Big East Women's Basketball Conference. Let's take a look at the ticket review. If you like what you're seeing right now, you're going to like what you're seeing in March as well. The Women's Basketball Tournament ticket packages are on sale now. Reserve seating all session ticket booklets start at just $50. Per package courtside seating is also available all session ticket packages include all five sessions of the tournament single session tickets are as low as just fifteen dollars groups of 15 or more can purchase single session tickets for eight dollars go to bigeast.com slash women's basketball tickets to find out more take a look at the standings this is why it's a big game coach 11 and 1 to paul certainly ahead of the field at the moment but seton hall is trying to at least bring them closer back to the pack with butler marquette and seton hall waiting there in second and third place Look, right now it's so bunched up. Second place is up for grabs. Yeah. Uh, Paul, DePaul's got a two-game lead late right. here in the in the season, but seeding is so important. Yeah. You want to be in that 2-3 instead of that 4-5 because in the semifinals now you're not playing DePaul in Chicago. Exactly. And, of course, you want that two-seed as well. And just probably play that lower seed as well early on in the tournament as well. That's why this game is so important. Obviously, DePaul looking good at the top, but obviously, you know, they want to stay strong going into March as well. They know that the Big East tournament is extremely tough and you want to be playing your strongest basketball at the right time. And again, I'm so impressed with DePaul and how quickly they get the ball up the court, how hard they play, how hard they hit the offensive boards. Nice stretch though for Seton Hall. A couple of turnovers that have led to baskets for Maya Jackson and Lauren Park Lane going into that last time out. And that's been a trademark in Coach Bazella's career. He's always liked to press a little bit. He hasn't done it as much. Here they're using the half court trap version of it. Campbell controls, kick out, it's a deep three-point jump shot, it's short from Held. And it looks like a foul gonna be underneath against Seton Hall. That's her range though, she can shoot it once she steps over half court. She gets her, her feet set, perfect form, great uh, long range three-point shooter. The foul was on Desiree Elmore. I believe that is her first, team's first of the quarter. Paul has two team fouls so far in the second quarter, 6.33 to go. In the first half, DePaul with a four-point lead, and they extend it. Great baseline out of bounds, and the jumper from Held is good. And that's the last two baseline out of bounds DePaul has scored, so they've gotten four points out of it. Really important. Here is Shadeen Samuels. Five points so far for her. Johnson out wide. Fires and hits. That's a three. Barbara Johnson is on the board with a trifecta, and the Pirates are back within one possession. Huge basket for her. We talked about her picking up where Lewis left off on Friday night. She could be a big X factor in this game, although Shantae Stonewall has been going to work all afternoon so far. 17 points already, almost half of DePaul's points total. And it's a five point game again, just like that. Great move on the fadeaway. Yeah, she went, she went a little uh, shoulder fake, went over her left shoulder. Elmore with the answer though, it's off the mark, off to the left. And DePaul has it on the rebound. Again, working quickly, Morris to Campbell. Deep three-pointer on the far side from Dahlman, no good, but Shantae Stonewall is at it again, and she goes back to the line for two more on the offensive glass. She just outworked you. I mean, Shadeen Samuels was in good position right there. Kind of swam over her to get that O board and go to the foul line. She just is relentless on the offensive board. That combination of her athleticism, her length, and you mentioned the hard work, that is a heck of a package to try to go up against going for rebounds. Isn't and it's it? a staple in the DePaul program. I mean, I'm sure Coach Bruno's not putting you on the court unless you go 100 miles an hour all the time. 
hunting offensive rebounds, hunting turnovers on the defensive end. And she makes you pay at the free throw line as well. Knocks down the first. And that should be seven offensive rebounds already for DePaul. Well, she misses the second, and the foul's going to go the other way against DePaul, it looks like. A foul underneath the basket. And it's on Kelly Campbell, her first personal. So 19, pardon me, 18 points. Shante Stonewall already for the DePaul Blue Demons. And they'll, show a little, first half and they'll show a little full court pressure right here just to take some time off the clock. Maya Jackson, little weave to Barbara Johnson. Crossed over in the paint, had it knocked away. And I think Johnson fouled her as it was tipped away by Morris and she didn't want her to get away with it. And Seton Hall went into a little dribble handoff series right there. DePaul was switching the dribble handoffs. They did a good job of staying in front of the ball handler. And Barbara can't turn her back on the defender like she did right there, at least with turnover. A little full court pressure from Seton Hall. One, two, two, three quarter court. Seven turnovers apiece so far for DePaul and Seton Hall. Now the Pirates making it tough for Shante Stonewall defensively, and they get a turnover. Lauren Park Lane on a three on two. Goes all the way in, off the glass it goes. Pirates are making it happen defensively, and another turnover. Samuels with the steal. Johnson the basket. In and out, no good. Through the contact and just couldn't get it to go. Stonewall's wide open. No good this time. Weak side rebound, though, by Morris. And it's taken away by Samuels. And again, Seton Hall started this little minute spurt here with some uh, half court trap, three quarter court trap, offense. Uh, defense leading to their offense. DePaul doesn't care, though. They're coming right back at you and trying to get a quick shot. Walsh fans making themselves heard for the first time this afternoon in loud voice here on campus. Eight to shoot for Jackson. Now it's Samuels with five to shoot. Went right into the body. It's an offensive foul. Great job by Lexi Held to beat her to the spot, and it's going the other way. And again, late shot clock. Seton Hall goes to a ball screen. They switch it. Kelly Campbell can guard any position. It doesn't really matter. Draws a charge on Shadeen. Well, those could be momentum killers, can't they? A great little stretch there for Seton Hall, but DePaul gets the turnover, and they regain possession, although it's back down to a four-point lead. In this quarter, Seton Hall's been as close as three points. And the largest lead for DePaul was nine earlier in the quarter. It'll be interesting to see if uh, DePaul gets even more three-point attempts against the half-court, three-quarter court traps. Harder to get out on shooters. They had a good look on with Shante Stonewall in the previous possession, just couldn't knock it down. It's a pressure on Campbell. They do get an open look here. Near side corner, it's a three. Sonia Morris is deadly from deep. And just like we talked about, get it to the middle, hit a wing for a three. The trap wasn't bad. Stonewall just sees over it. Had that one right on cue, Coach. And they knock it down, seven-point lead for DePaul. Barbara Johnson has played a lot in this second quarter. Over to Maya Jackson. Love to see Shadeen Samuels get going for Seton Hall. Jackson not afraid and answers with a big three-pointer of her own. And Coach Mazzella wants a timeout. An emphatic timeout, by the way. Again, just some dribble handoff on the perimeter. They're switching everything. She was open for about a foot, let it go. I mean, I don't know if that's the offense they're wanting to run right now but they knocked down a three out of it. Not sure anybody calls a more emphatic timeout than Coach Mazzella. That's Pirates true. back within four. We'll take a timeout, 3.36 to go inside Walsh Gymnasium on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. By four, Sean St. Jacques, Phil Stern here with you. And DePaul gets it back off a big three-point shot by Maya Jackson. Pirates are back within four. The closest they've been in this second quarter, a three-point deficit. Trying to ramp it up, trying to speed up DePaul even more. Trying to maybe force, they forced a couple of turnovers. Far side three is good, and that's how deadly Lexi Held can be from and downtown. You, and you live by the pressure, you die by the pressure. A couple of turnovers led to offense for Seton Hall. Last two possessions, DePaul did a great job dissecting the trap, getting threes. Maya Jackson has it for Seton Hall. Just over three to play in the first half. Desiree Elmore a little strong on that long two-pointer. 
And an Olash fouls after Sonia Morris came down with the rebound. That's her first personal, and that's gonna send DePaul to the free throw line. But again, silly foul, 85 feet from the basket. It's your fifth foul of the quarter. You're yes. sending them down to shoot two shots, and they get a chance to put their pressure on after the made free throws. So Sonia Morris will head to the line for two free throws here with 3.02 to go, first half. I tell you, interesting stat to me, Kelly Campbell has not attempted a shot yet in this game, still making a huge impact on it. Eight rebounds, three assists for Campbell. You mentioned it, not even taking a shot yet in this first half and yeah. still making a massive impact, like you said, but also doing the dirty work on the offensive on the offensive end and also rebounding. Does a little bit of everything. She's just making all, all of her hometown fans wait for the second half for her scoring. That's right, 25 plus here, we're told, for the native of Wall, New Jersey. St. John Vianney High School. Lauren Park Lane controls. Allash has made two already, this time too strong. Johnson can't quite get it for the Pirates. And here comes Kelly Campbell. And I don't know if that's the shot Se uh, Seton Hall wants early in the shot clock. Stonewall, who's been red hot in the first half. Ooh, an offensive foul that time, though, on the drive. And the, it was, I think, on a push off. It was Kelly Campbell, I think. Oh, there you go. Came over, tried to set a little ball screen down in the short corner right there. She might have moved a little bit. Referee was right, right on it. Yeah, good call, like you said. And Another look at it here. That's her second foul, and you saw what I didn't see there, Coach. You're right, it was a off-the-ball foul there. And the Pirates get it back, 2.36 to go. This feels like a big stretch at the end of the first half for Seton Hall to stay in this thing. Always a big final three minutes. Could you end the half on a high note? If you're Seton Hall, could you cut the lead? If you're DePaul, extend it going into the half on the road. Lauren Park Lane controls. Underneath the Samuels, great look inside, and Samuels hesitated, but then gets the two off the glass. And that's where the ball should go. Threw her on the block. If they double, then it's a good three for Alesh. They didn't, easy bucket for uh, Samuels. Seton Hall hoping to get a little bit more of that as this game goes on. They're hoping that Samuels and Elmore can get going. Stonewall had great position. Yes, and a foul, and she is fired up. Tough matchup down there for Alexis Lewis. I think that's gonna be our fourth foul. She comes right back in and picks up her fourth foul. Shante Stonewall has 20 first half points I don't and know a chance for another at the line. And I don't know if they got cross match down there or what, but I'm sure she wasn't supposed to be on Stonewall on the block down there. And you mentioned it earlier, Coach. It's even more worth bringing up now. 28 points in her last game, and all of a sudden in this game, four first half fouls, and she has to go to the bench, and we might not see her for a long time in this game. Missed free throw, though, by Stonewall. She's now one of three at the line. Well, she's doing everything else. I was going to so. say, but that's the only blemish on her record so far in this first half. 20 first half points. She has been phenomenal for DePaul, and the lead is 46-38. Lauren Park Lane into Shadeen Samuels. Knocked away by Morris, but a foul is called. And Seton Hall actually ran an old Tom Izzo Michigan State zone play right there against man-to-man. -man. Specifically, I think, to get Shadeen Samuels in isolation at the elbow, and it worked. That does put DePaul in the penalty. Free throws for Shadeen Samuels. And she gets the roll on the first. And although Alexis Lewis had 28 Friday night, she's not giving Seton Hall the scoring today, you have other people stepping up, Alesh, Fuentes, other people scoring. Jackson knocked down a big three. Two free throws for Shadeen Samuels. She has nine first half points along with three rebounds and three assists, and even when it seems like she's having a quiet game, you keep looking at that stat sheet, and she's got all the numbers you'd expect out of one of the best players in the Big East and in the country. And look, look for DePaul to go back in. They and tried, Allash denied it, but give it right back to Stonewall, and she scores. Tough luck for Allash. You know, obviously every coach in the country says, don't save the ball out of bounds under your own basket, but sometimes it's just instinct. Uh, Lester's trying to make a hustle play. Well, Stonewall's having one of those kind of first half. She was in the right place at the right time that time, and she has 22 points for the DePaul Blue Demons who have an eight-point lead. She's got her number. Olesh is open. And short on the two-point jump shot from about 15 feet out. 54 seconds to go in the half. 
Strong drive in Stein by Stovall. It's Dolman underneath, and she traveled. That's a good call. Yeah, it looked like she picked up her pivot foot before she put the ball down. Again, here in the last minute, look for Samuels and Stonewall to both touch the ball for both teams. Both teams are in, in, the, in, the, double, in the bonus here with five fouls each at least. Look to go to the foul line to end the half. 50 seconds to go in the first half as it was Held, who will go to the bench for DePaul. Not sure what the whistle was for there, but the game's back underway. Lauren Park Lane will bring it up, and the Pirates will use a little bit of clock, it looks like, here. About a 20-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, but it's thrown away. Dahlman got around Samuels to pick it up, right behind the back dribble there by Stovall to get it up the court. Now it's a 10 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock for DePaul. And the little things in the game are so impressive by DePaul. Stonewall yelling at them to bring it out for one shot. And she'll take that shot and make that shot. 24 first half points for Shante Stonewall making it look easy and DePaul has a 10 point lead. You know, there's a bunch of WNBA scouts here. They gotta be really impressed with her. She Ten scored seconds. in so many different ways. What a first half she's had. Six seconds for the Pirates to get a shot off here. Jackson on the drive with three seconds. Pulls up with two. No good. Tallman the rebound, and the first half ends here inside Walsh Gym. Well, it's been the Shante Stonewall Show on the road in South Orange. DePaul with a strong finish to the quarter, like you mentioned. They've got a double-digit lead at the half on the road. You know, whenever you're on the road, you can put up 50 points no matter what style you play. It's impressive. But to do it on Sunday after playing a tough game Friday night, they must be in incredible shape, and they play incredibly hard. What a first half for Stonewall. What a first half for DePaul. They have a double-digit lead as we head to the half. More to come after a break on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Trust Arena. Get tickets now. Halftime at Walsh Gym, 10 point lead for the 14th ranked DePaul Blue Demons. We take a look at the Players of the Week. Let's take a look at the Big D's Weekly Honor Roll as well. We look at Players of the Week though first. Obviously we're seeing one of them here tonight, Coach Kelly Campbell. No points in the first half, but doing just about everything else for DePaul in this game. And obviously, Maddie Seekers, what a year she's had. Big East freshman of the week, redshirted last year for Villanova. Now is one of the best scorers in the conference. And that's what Coach Peretta does. He redshirts you, he gets you ready to play in a system. You have to learn your system, much like DePaul, although opposite styles. You recruit to the system. She's taking advantage of it after her redshirt year. Obviously, Harry Peretta is last season, but it's great to see him have another great team that's really trying to compete to finish the season strong in the Big East. Maddie Seegers, a big part of that as we look at the Big East weekly honor roll as well. I mean, obviously, two great players there. When I mean, you look at the Big East weekly honor roll, a great mix of different players from the conference. Obviously, Shadeen Samuels there. I saw Mary Gadeka, great season that she's had with Villanova. And obviously, Kristen Spoyer has been one of the great players in this conference the last four years with the Butler Bulldogs. Yeah, and I think she's gone through some injuries, if I'm not mistaken. Fun to watch. 
uh, plays hard all the time, puts up big numbers. And Selena Lott, Olivia Elger, Creighton, the only team that's beaten DePaul so far during the conference season. What a year the Jays are having. They're trying to stick around, trying to fight for that two seed as well. And you got a couple of teams doing that. Everyone's kind of bunched up. Also, NCAA tournament implications when you talk about coming in second and third and maybe some of the head-to-head -head games as well. Got a good game so far. A number of players featured there featuring in this game as well. More to come at the half. DePaul up by 10 on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Today was this Wednesday, February 5th. The Big East Conference is proud to celebrate the strong and inspiring women participating and thriving across the sporting landscape. Hear from some of the women's basketball standouts across the league on their greatest female influences in sports. My greatest female influence in sports would be my older sister. She is a basketball player as well, and she plays at the collegiate level. And I also was able to always look up to her and admire her as a role model. She's faced a lot of adversity through the sport, so just having that connection with her has been really great. Serena Williams, um, she's opened up so many doors for women just in how she carries herself and like all the things that she has brought to her game in tennis, even endorsements and all the commercials and opportunities she's opened for women. I think that would have to be Skylar Diggins. Just I love how um, she embodies herself as a woman and how she plays hard and she never steps down to anything. I really enjoy Sydney LaRue from the U.S. Women's National Team. I just actually watched her um, video series on her having a child and coming back from that. So I think just I like how she has pursued and to be a great leader on her team as well as a mother. Natisha Heidemann because just because we knew each other for however many years and seeing her go to the league is just amazing. Allison Felix and Sabrina Williams. Those women are just amazing in the things that they do. They just continue to pave the way for myself and as a basketball player. Athletes such as Maya Moore, Della Don, because I kind of try to mimic their style of play. On, on the court and off the court, they're just great women to look up to. I really hope to be just like them one day and all their success and also give back to the sport that they've played in. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Liotis. Breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's episode, Megan was joined by Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams to break down the state of the league. 
Big East teams are on the back half of conference play with March implications on the line as we welcome in Fox Sports analyst Kim Adams. Kim, let's start at the top of the league and look at DePaul. The Blue Demons lead the conference at 10-1 and and in Monday night's NCAA tournament projections of the top 16 seeds, the DePaul Blue Demons checked in at a 14 seed. What do you make of what the Blue Demons have done so far this season? Well, I think anything that with DePaul and coach Doug Bruno, the word I always think of is consistency. So once again, DePaul has been consistent. Um, Did they have that little slip up against Creighton? Yes, but I honestly think sometimes a loss like that can can help a little bit when you're really rolling along and you're winning games. Um, They had been undefeated in the league before that Creighton loss. So I think that can almost help you recalibrate at time, but they just have so many weapons, obviously, All starting with Kelly Campbell, uh, this week's Big East Player of the Week after a a triple-double. But she's she's orchestrating everything. And then they just have so many scores. Um, Sonia Morris has made a big jump this year. Lexi Held. I think Lexi Held is a potential future Big East Player of the Year. Um, She's got probably the purest stroke, shooting stroke, maybe that I've ever seen across any level I've covered, um, WNBA, uh, men's college, women's college. um, When you see her shoot, it's like, wow, that's a pure stroke. Um, So they just have so many guards. They don't have a ton of size, um, but they, the way they play, they don't really need to rely on any size. Um, The way they can just get up and down the floor, um, really get teams out of their comfort level. uh, Once that press comes on and they're forcing turnovers, Um, You can get a signature DePaul run where if you're playing them, you might be down two. And then all of a sudden you look up and you're down 12. So, again, I think that Creighton loss uh, may may have helped them. On the topic of tournament projections and Charlie Cream's latest bracketology, both of those teams were included. There were two of four teams that Charlie Cream has in there, DePaul, Creighton, Marquette and St. John's. What does that, that say to the depth of the league this year? Absolutely. I mean, I think it would be great for the league to get four, maybe even five teams in. Um, I like that those four teams are in. I think maybe a fifth could sneak in as well. Um, I think Seton Hall could make some noise. I think they're going to have to do a lot of work for the rest of Big East play. Um, They've been a little bit inconsistent, but but with that, you have those four teams in. So when you're playing against those four teams, that's a big chance to boost your resume with a win. Um, so I think a team like Seton Hall just has to recognize those opportunities that are ahead of them and that it's not just impacting that one game, um, but their chances of getting into March Madness. How about a team that's maybe surprised you this season with where they're at right now in the conference standings? I think it's absolutely Marquette. That was a team who is second in the standings and was picked ninth in the preseason poll. Um, And you think about all that they lost, all five starters who had all averaged 1,000 points or more. Um, Alizé blocked in 2,000 points. So they just they lost an incredible amount. So to think, and not to mention their head coach, Carolyn Keeger. Um, so to think about the job that Coach Duffy has done in her first year is pretty incredible. As we're on the back half of conference play now, Kim, these games are all the more important. And you look at the standings and you've got two teams at seven and four, St. John's and Seton Hall, and then another tie at six and five, Creighton and Villanova. We're going into a really important weekend this upcoming weekend. What is What do these teams have to do to really get that win and be able to make a break away from these ties? Um, for what I've seen, a lot of these teams need to put together a full 40 minutes. Um, teams like St. John, Seton Hall, who are currently sitting in fourth and, fourth and fifth. This is a huge weekend for them. Um, welcoming in the top two teams, DePaul and Marquette. And it's going to be on their home floor. Um, Seton Hall, I've had them a bunch this year. And you see glimpses of greatness. You see glimpses of, wow, this could be the second best team in the league. This team could beat DePaul, I think. Um, But then there's games where they come out slow. Um, We saw that against St. John's in the all-access game. I saw that the other day against Villanova. They were able to come back in that one. Um, but against a team like DePaul and Marquette, you can't dig yourself into a hole. Joe Tartamella, St. John's, he's actually the opposite. He's talked about the importance of his team closing games. Um, so I think this is a time where you have to lock in on a full 40 minutes. Um, you can't give up 
you can't get lazy for three minutes against DePaul or they'll go on a 14-2 run. Kim Adams, everybody, you can catch her at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Friday night as Marquette visits Seton Hall. And then again on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern with Villanova at Butler. Kim, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome, Megan. I'll uh, see you around at some of the games, I'm sure. 10-point lead for the 14th-ranked DePaul Blue Demons at the half. Sean St. Jacques, Phil Stern, back with you inside a jam-packed Walsh Gymnasium, taking a look at the first half stats as the crowd is enjoying the halftime festivities here on campus in South Orange, New Jersey. Coach, I think there's pretty much one number that stands out, plus 15 on the boards for DePaul in the first half, and obviously along with Shante Stonewall doing really well, they're knocking down their threes as well, seven three-point makes for the Blue Demons in the first half. I mean, the statistics are what I thought, they stand out like I thought they did before the game. Like, they don't seem real. 56% uh, from the field, 41% from three. Nine offensive rebounds, 10 assists. They fill every box in the stat sheet. They play so hard and they play so fast. Shante Stonewall is four points off tying her career high in points that she had last year against Marquette. She's just a tough guard. Anybody that they're gonna send to her is gonna be at a deficit. Whether it's on the perimeter, whether it's on the block, it's always a mismatch. And she does such a great job of shoulder faking, getting to her left shoulder understanding where the offensive rebound is going to go. And she's shot ready tonight from the three-point line, even though she's 26 uh, under 30% coming into the game. On the Seton Hall side of things, they have seven steals in this game. They've been forcing some turnovers. What do they need to do better to try to get back into this game? Well, once they went to some trapping, some three-quarter court, some half-quarter court, they got back in the game. Look to see some more of that. They just got to stay out of foul trouble. Third member of our team, Ashley Lyotis, is standing by. Ashley? I talked to both coaches during halftime. Coach Bruno gave me five words for DePaul. He said they need to take care of the basketball. Now, as far as Seton Hall goes, Coach Pizella said he is not pleased at all with their rebounding. He's still not super concerned about how many threes they have. They have seven. They average 11 on each game. But right now, rebounding 25 to 10, guys. Yeah, Ashley, no question about that. And you mentioned it, Coach, when we were off the air. Offensive rebounding as well, 9 to 2 in favor of DePaul. And you know, obviously, DePaul would like to limit those turnovers as well on the road. That can always be something that hurts you, as you well know. But also, for Seton Hall, that rebounding march has got to close at least a little bit. 15 is a massive number, it feels like. Yeah, and again, maybe the trapping will help. Maybe we'll get some more turnovers. Less shots leads to less rebounds, clearly. Uh, but as you know, as Ashley said, Coach Bazella not so concerned about the three-point line. Uh, and I think the pressure shows it, because he knows he's going to give up some three-pointers when they're trapping. We're on Stonewall watch as this second half gets underway. She is four points away from tying her career high. Again, it was March 12th last season, 28 points in a game against the Marquette Golden Eagles. She has 24 already at the start of the second half. Again, the other thing to keep in mind for the Pirates, Alexis Lewis has been in foul trouble all game. She again starts it on the bench with four fouls already, three in the first quarter. And Stonewall immediately affects the game on the defensive end using her length, knock the entry pass away from Samuels, knock it out of bounds. Into Desiree Elmore for the Pirates. Elmore with only five points in the first half. They're hoping she can get a few more here in the second half to say the least. Maya Jackson with a three-pointer. Big shot to open the second half. Jackson has seven points off the bench. That's her first three. And, and a little uh, Villanova back down action right there and then skip it for the three. Block on the other end. Pirates get it back. Here's Lauren Park Lane. Kicks it out. Jackson in the paint. Yes, off the glass with the left hand. Number five has five in a row to start the second half. And you talked about her being instant offense in the first half. She's instant offense right here. Quick timeout for Coach Bruno. They have heated up the microwave inside walls. Maya Jackson has five already out of the gates. And just like that, it's back to a five-point game inside Walsh Gym. We're going to go to break here on the Big East Digital Network. Good start for the Pirates here in Walsh Gym at the start of the second half. Five for Maya Jackson, and the Pirates are back within five with 9.03 to play here in the third. You're watching Seton Hall Basketball on the Big East Digital Network.
right? We gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. Five-point game here inside Walsh Gym. Sean St. Jacques, the coach, Phil Stern. Ashley Lyotis on the sidelines here in South Orange. And Maya Jackson out of the gates has been heating up things offensively for the Pirates. All of a sudden, she's up to 12 points and five straight to start this second half. And the Pirates, of course, made trying to make it six of their last seven. They're trying to find their stride here at the start of this second half. And see that score expand at the bottom of that graphic there. And... Pirates, of course, are in good form right now. Five of their last six, trying to make it six of the last seven. They got a tough test to finish this game off with. The Paulson playing extremely well also as well, but a good start from Jackson specifically. Yeah, you know, whether she's off the bench, whether she starts the half, she could score against anybody. Uh, she doesn't need a play run for her. Quick steal by Seton Hall out of the timeout. And again, they get a hand in the passing lane there, and the Pirates pick it off. Lauren Park Lane will slow things down in the half court for Seton Hall. Finding Desiree Elmore, quick dump down to Samuels. The help came through. Samuels fought through the contact and banks it in. Side pick and roll. They switch to side pick and roll. Samuels rolls down to the block. They throw it in. Splits the double team for the bucket. Three point game. Just like that. It's a 7 0 Pirate run out of the gates in the second half. And again, Seton Hall, in winning six of the last seven, has gained a lot of confidence for a game like this. It was a mismatch underneath, but Morris faded away instead of going into the body of the defender. It's Pirate Ball, a chance to tie with a three. Jackson, though, went without the ball, recovers it, has to get rid of it, and throws it away. Now Church is on the ground. She's trying to get rid of it. It's a fight for it, and it's a jump ball. And that's going to be DePaul basketball on the arrow. And to me, that's the definition of college basketball, right? Both teams, two or three guys on the floor fighting for the ball, go to the jump ball arrow. As Dickie B would say, I hate the arrow, let's throw it up. <laughs> there you go. And instead it's going to be side out for DePaul. 8.01 to go in the third quarter. Pirates are within three, the closest they've been since the first quarter. DePaul's largest lead of the game was 10, obviously at the half. Yeah, Kelly Campbell still without a shot in this game, although they haven't needed her offense yet. Morris on the block with Jackson guarding her. Kick out to Hell, drives inside. Jumper is good for about 10 feet out. Big basket for DePaul, and the lead is back up to five. A big bucket for her. She's known as a three-point shooter. Oh, Lauren Park Lane went all the way to the bucket, was rejected by Church. Fight for it, and the Pirates get it back. Barbara Johnson doing the dirty work on the defensive end, and the Pirates regain possession. And again, it's doing the little things to help your team. Knocking the ball away trying to draw a charge, anything to give your team a spark, and that's what Barbara's doing right now. 7.33 to play in the third quarter. Packed Walsh Gym starting to make some noise here on campus in South Orange. A dangerous pass, but Maya Jackson is able to grab it ahead of Kelly Campbell. Near side Johnson, guarded by Morris. Samuels tried to dump it inside. Somehow Elmore made the catch, and then she scores as well. Pirates were looking for a foul, they didn't get it. It's a three-point game. And DePaul runs it back at you so fast, you can't celebrate for a second. Stonewall right down to the block. Church, what a drive inside. Easy left-handed finish off the glass. You have to pay so much attention to Stonewall on the block there is, that there are plenty of driving lanes open for the DePaul guards. She found the space, it's back to a five-point game, 54-49. Lauren Park Lane, three points for the Pirates, including, rather I should say, also a steal. Now she has a three, that's off the mark. And a rebound by Church. Here comes Campbell for the Blue Demons. Great find, Morris near side. 
Too strong on the three, offensive rebound by Stonewall. Right back out to Morris, quick trigger. This time it's short, and it will go out of bounds. Seton Hall basketball with six and a half to go in the third. And right there is why it's so great to play for a coach like Doug Bruno. Two three-pointers in a row, didn't hesitate at all, and he's probably telling her, shoot the third one or I'll take you out. Gotta love when the coach gives the confidence to his players, and like you said, she did not waste any time on that second one, even though she just missed one just a couple of seconds before. And Barbara Johnson. And obviously everyone on DePaul has the green light from the three-point line here. Johnson inside, oh, hit the bottom of the backboard, so unlucky that she went underneath, and it's gonna be DePaul basketball underneath the basket. That was such a good drive, just didn't know where she was, I guess, going underneath the basket. Yeah, she overpenetrated yeah. a little bit, ended up <laughs> under the backboard right there. Probably should have jump-stopped and tried to kick it. Three points for Barbara Johnson, does have a steal as well. Five points for Park Lane and four assists. Campbell still has not taken a shot for DePaul. Stonewall's taken plenty of them. That one's off the mark though, and last off Morris. Seton Hall ball with 5.53 to go, and as good as Stonewall's been in the first half, maybe it's, you're starting to feel like Kelly Campbell might need to start knocking down some shots here. Yeah, and she's biding her time. I mean, she did a good job feeding it into the post good right point. there, relocating to the corner. If they start to double team, they'll kick it out. If not, Stonewall's gonna keep uh, trying to make a post move. And again, nine rebounds, three assists. You're like, what else can she do? She just yeah. hasn't gotten it going yet offensively, hasn't, hasn't taken a shot yet as well. Lauren little horns Park action, Lane. little horns action here for Seton Hall. Elmore almost went without the basketball, keeps it alive. Samuels dribbled into trouble. Back out to Elmore. Pulls up, 15-footer is pure. Boy, she's got a bag of tricks, doesn't she? She does a great job jab-stepping. She, she can go either way, left or right, to knock down that mid-range jumper. Denial on Stonewall, tapped out of bounds. It's Pirate basketball. Great defense by Samuels diving on the floor. Two great players going at it right there, Samuels and Stonewall. They're both battling on offense and defense. Both of those players play both ends of the floor, and it's really impressive to see. Now DePaul trying to ramp up the pressure. Only one place for Jackson to go here, and she does get it to Lauren Park Lane just in time. Pirates are back within three points. Elmore on the elbow. Foul going up with it, two shots. Loves to cast it on either elbow. She could either reverse pivot, rip it and go. She could drab step, she can go either way. Get all the way to the basket or shoot the mid range. Great job by uh, uh, Elmore to get to the foul line here. Seems like every time Desiree Elmore plays, it seems like she pulls out a new trick or a new move. It's, it's just, she has so many ways she can beat you on the offensive end and she knocks down the first free throw. Now interesting to see what Coach Bruno does. Last time these guys played, he went zone in the second half. Let's see if he goes back to it here because they continually try to just isolate Samuels and Elmore right here. It's a great point. Coach Mazzella said that changed the game in Chicago the last time they played each other this season in the conference. And now Coach Mazzella wants Walsh to stand up here, getting the crowd into it. One point game, five minutes to go in the third, and Kelly Campbell is finally on the board. And it couldn't have been any easier of an attempt. Nobody within 10 feet of her for the layup. Her first shot, her first points, Perfectly timed, it's a three-point game. Not for long, though. Shadeen Samuels answers. It's back to one. Again, for Seton Hall, you two best players touching the ball. Uh, great position by Samuels on the block. Elmore did a great job finding her in the post. Church, jab step. It's it to Campbell. Top of the key, Stonewall thought about it. Great hesitation move, but good help by Jasmine Smith. Getting her first minutes of the game for the Pirates. Blue Demons have five to shoot, it's a chucked up three, it's short. Lauren Park Lane has the rebound. Pirates haven't led since the first quarter. Their largest lead was five nothing to start the game. Samuels underneath for the lead, it goes. And you can see the concerted effort by Seton Hall to post up either Samuels or Elmore. They don't care what the matchup is at this point. Seton Hall is back in front for a moment. Three pointer by Kelly Campbell and the Blue Demons are back in front by two. And the New Jersey native starting to heat up a little bit. Five points here. It was only a matter of time, right? Five points out, uh, out of nowhere here it seems for Kelly Campbell. Back to a two point game. Elmore underneath, knocked away, stays with Seton Hall with 3.32 to go in this quarter. It looks like the Pirates will call a timeout here. 
to discuss things. 3.33 to go in the third quarter. It's getting good here inside Walsh. The 14th ranked Blue Demons are up by two on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Digital Network, the 14th ranked DePaul Blue Demons, top of the conference, have a two-point lead here against the Seton Hall Pirates inside Walsh Gym. Sean St. Jacques, the coach, Phil Stern. Ashley Lyotis on the sidelines here with you uh, in South Orange. Will, we've been waiting for Wall, New Jersey's finest to wake up here, at least as far as the point total is concerned, coach. Five quick ones, and she's getting hot in a hurry here in the third quarter for the DePaul Blue Demons. Final game in the state, St. John Vianney, perennial power in the state girls basketball. Again, she doesn't have to score to impact the game. She's got five in the last couple minutes here. Look for her to start to heat up uh, and, again, still feed the ball to Stonewell. But the, the 25, 30 people that are here to support her have to be pretty happy right now. 53 miles away from Wall, New Jersey here in South Orange. You saw their pretty good numbers in her homecoming trips against Seton Hall and St. John's. A football pass intercepted by Campbell. Here comes Wall, New Jersey to the 10. Yes, off the glass. I mean, we just talked about it. You know, she makes a great play off a baseline out of bounds play. Again, you don't really want to throw the ball to half quarter for Seton Hall. Makes a great anticipation play like she's the free safety, goes and lays it in. Just like that, it's back to a four point game, 61 57, 3 12 to go in the third. Jasmine Smith was wide open on the near side, thought better of it after she drove into traffic. Lauren Park Lane drives through traffic. Yes, off the glass. That's a tough shot that right there. Goes right in the dolman for the two. She's fearless in there. No question about that. Never afraid to climb through the trees, to, or through the paint, I should say, is Lauren Park Lane. Speaking of trees, Dahlman kicks it out. Church, guarded by Jasmine Smith. Good defender for the Pirates this season. Number 21 in white. Dahlman again, eight to shoot. Long two-pointer, short. Fight for the rebound. Morris has it. And the shot clock resets to 20 for DePaul. With two and a half to play in the quarter. And that's all their second offensive rebound of the half. Here's Campbell now up to seven points. She's now three of four from the field after not taking a shot for most of this game. Seven to shoot. Baseline jumper from Church is pure. Four-point lead for DePaul. And Coach Bruno goes big here with Dahlman and Stowell in the game together, obviously to try to guard both uh, Elmore and Samuels on the block. Church is now in double figures for DePaul with 10 points. And Jackson was a little bit lazy with that pass. Morris, though, lost it. Stepped out of bounds, and it's given right back to the Pirates. A couple of miscues on both ends. We now head over to Ashley Lyotis with what she heard during that last timeout. Hey guys, yeah, I was just listening to both of the coaches' huddles there uh, at the under five timeout. And 
It was a very positive atmosphere as far as Seton Hall goes. They just battled back, had the lead for a few seconds there when Shadeen Samuels went up for that too. And We talked to Coach ahead of game, Coach Bazella, and he really focused in on Desiree and Shadeen coming in. They had to come in hot and they had to score today if they wanted to win. Well, they are doing that. That makes 28 points between the two with that Desiree score right there. Guys. Right on cue, Ashley, as Elmore scores. It's a two-point game. Stonewall underneath, right place, right time, right into the bread basket, and she gets two free throws on the putback. And you know, sometimes you gotta be good, sometimes you gotta be lucky. DePaul, a little lucky right there. Great defense by uh, Elmore, tips the three-pointer, and of course, Stonewall first to it, and one. I'm sorry, just one shot, didn't go in. Stonewall has no points in the second half, 24 in the first half, so the Pirates have tried to limit her in the second half. Still no points. Short on the first free throw for Shante Stonewall. Was 10 of 15 from the field in the first half. Hasn't done much at all here in the second half. Make that 10 of 14 in the first half. Again, I think great move by Coach Bruno. Uh, going with a little bigger lineup. Try to defend the interior a little more against Samuels and Elmore. First second half point for Stonewall. She's up to 25. Three points off of tying her career high. Three-point lead for DePaul, 1.15 to play in the third. Smith driving baseline, kick out Samuels. Great rotation around. Jackson for the tie. Too strong. Fight for the rebound. Samuel couldn't save it. And it's DePaul Blue Demon Ball, 105 to play in the third. Again, in the game within the game, DePaul no longer switching the pick and rolls because of the matchups. They don't want to have a guard on the post against uh, Elmore and, and Samuels. Under a minute to go in this third quarter. It's been a good one. Lexus Lewis, by the way, back in with four fouls. Couldn't quite get the roll on the held three-pointer. It's a foul going against DePaul. That might have been Deja Church pushing off. It is. That's her third personal foul. Second team foul of the quarter. And Seton Hall gets it back. 52 seconds to go in the third three-point game. And Seton Hall switched to a 2-3 zone for that possession right there. Again, you're even more susceptible to offensive rebounds. Maya Jackson, 22 second difference, shot to game clock, and Samuels is fouled on the drive inside. Isolate Samuels at the high post now, and the elbow, Dahlman's on her. So leave the block, go to the high post, get it to her, rip it through, can't put your hands on the ball handler. Ashley was mentioning earlier, now 28 points combined between Samuels and Elmore, 15 and 13 respectively here in the third quarter, up to now that total here in the third. Elmore back to work through traffic, gets a blocking foul on the drive inside. And just like that, that's four team fouls in the quarter for DePaul. And again, one of our keys to the game for DePaul was containing Samuels and Elmo. They did it for one quarter, haven't done it here, uh, for one half, haven't done it in the third quarter. 14 second difference now, shot clock to game clock. Lewis, been in foul trouble, back out to Jackson. Good rotation over to Samuels, who drives and she traveled before she put the ball down on the floor. Yeah, it looks like she picked her pivot foot up there. Good call. Last shot here uh, for DePaul. Yeah, 24 and a half seconds left here. End of the third quarter. Could be a big possession here. It's a three-point game. Kelly Campbell, the Wall, New Jersey native, will control. And Seton Hall in a 2-3 zone here for the last possession. Campbell has it. Guarded by Jasmine Smith. Swung all the way over to Lexi Held, the Burlington, Kentucky native. It's now with Morris. Kick out. Campbell has three to shoot. Over to Held with one left on the clock. She fires. It is no good. Short off the front of the rim. And that is the end of a wild third quarter here in South Orange. The Pirates were down 10 at the half, are back within three as we head to the fourth quarter. We're in for a good finish. Stay with us here on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. What can great minds do? While at Seton Hall, I interned with the Superior Court of New Jersey, and that inspired me to go to law school. I am a physics and civil engineering major, and I want to work on infrastructure in underdeveloped countries. I'm the news director at one of the top college radio stations in the country. I'm working with my professor on research that could help athletes during sudden cardiac events. I started my own business, Classic Soccer Cleats, and I just sold it to a company in England. Come see for yourself what great minds can do. We're all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them.
One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. possession game here in South Orange. Pirates have cut it back down to three. DePaul, top of the Big East, 14th in the country, trying to fend off the Seton Hall Pirates here on the Big East Digital Network. Sean St. Jacques, the coach, Phil Stern, Ashley Lyotis on hand on campus here in South Orange. Women's basketball tournament, of course, coming up in March. Reserved seating, all session ticket booklets start at just $50 per package. Courtside seating is also available. All session ticket packages include Five sessions of the tournament, all five of them. Single session tickets as low as $15. Groups of 15 or more can purchase single session tickets for $8. For more information, March 6th through the 8th, go to BigEast.com slash WBB tickets. Uh, of course, going to be in Chicago, Illinois, home of the DePaul Blue Demons. Top of the Big East coach at 11-1, and one, but they are trying to fend off the likes of Butler, Marquette, and, C and Seton Hall, along with St. John's and that rest of that group as well. Villanova and Creighton, they're all trying to fight for that two spot. If not, maybe drag DePaul, try to drag them back down to the field a little bit as well. You also, in case of a tie, want the tiebreaker to beat DePaul. No question. Which Creighton already has. So huge game right here, huge 10 minutes for Seton Hall. Three point game, DePaul led at 10 at the half. And the Pirates had a great third quarter getting back to what they do best. That's finding their best player. Shadeen had a wide open look there, but Samuels not able to get it to go. Again, Seton Hall shot almost 70% in the third quarter right there. Still couldn't take the lead, yeah. but they did for uh, possession. 2-3 zone by Seton Hall. Held in the far corner, guarded by Lewis with four fouls. Dribbled into traffic. It's a kick ball, I believe. And they'll stay with DePaul. And DePaul does an amazing job of skipping the ball against the zone. Something that in women's basketball is sometimes a little difficult to do. They throw such strong, hard passes against the zone. Campbell will inbound here. Just got it into Stonewall. Only one point for Shante Stonewall after 24 in the first half. And right on cue, she changes that. She's up to 27. And they tried to bring a little double team. She didn't care. She drops it, dribble drop stepped away from it. 27 points, one away from tying oh. her career high. Jackson drives, blocking foul underneath. Stonewall must have been in the restricted area there because she was de definitely there in time, but she's in the restricted area, so it's a block. Second foul against Shante Stonewall. And that is where they are mopping up there, Coach. That might be what your, your, uh, your thought there might be spot on there. And it's two free throws for Maya Jackson. Look for a little three-quarter court pressure, maybe back to the two-three zone here from Seton Hall. DePaul will attack it, though, and look to get a three before they even set the, the zone up. Jackson gets the first free throw to go. 13 points off the bench for Maya Jackson. And again, Coach Bruno sticking with the big lineup here, uh, strictly for the defensive end of the court. Wilmington, Ohio native, knocks them both down, comes from a great family. Coach Bazell has talked about her to us a couple of times, how great her upbringing was and how mature she was just coming into Seton Hall. And Coach Bazell said just didn't have to do a lot with her. She just was already ready to go, and, and her attitude has always been great. And obviously her play matches that as well. Coach Bazell gave her some great encouragement after she knocked down two big free throws there. Seton Hall still in the 2-3. Five out right now for DePaul against it. Morris, too strong on the three, but underneath, it's a foul against Seton Hall. Lewis and Samuels were in the area. It's against Shadeen Samuels. Fourth personal foul against Shadeen Samuels. So now Samuels and Lewis both sit on four fouls for the Pirates. And Seton Hall goes man to man on the baseline out of bounds. Off to Shante Stonewall. One basket away from setting a new career high. Morris, good on the three. 
Sonia Morris wide open, 11 points for her. Six point to Paul Lee with 8.40 to play. Here's Jackson. Elmore underneath to Samuel. She ripped her way through and draws the foul. And that time Stonewall was behind Samuels in the block. They were bringing a double team. Just happened to rake her arm right there. So look for them to play it a little differently in the post, whether it's behind and double it or front it and try to deter the entry pass. Three fouls now on Shate Stonewall, who picked up that one on the reach in on that Samuels drive. Lewis, three-pointer, is good. Well, she's been in trouble with fouls all game. Her first shot is good from three. Actually, it's her second. She's up to six points. Feels like it's her first shot. It's a three-point game, and boy, could Seton Hall use that down the stretch. And it's so hard to do. You're on the bench all game in foul trouble. You have no rhythm. You come in, you knock down a big shot in the fourth quarter. Uh, again, coming off a huge game Friday night. Boy, it's like pinch hitting in baseball. You just gotta be ready when the number is called, and Alexis Lewis is up to six points. Again, 2-3 zone by Seton Hall. DePaul five out with a flasher into the middle. Jelka over to Stonewall, eight to shoot for DePaul. Dalman, Morris again from three, and again, it's pure. It's so hard to guard the three-point line against a team where almost everybody has a green light to shoot the three. Six point to Paul lead, and here come the Pirates. Maya Jackson thought about going all the way and brings it back out to the perimeter. Elmore, great find. Allesh has knocked down a couple of threes today. Got caught up over to Elmore. Now there's a foul, I think, away from the basketball. On Morris underneath and the post on Lewis. Battling both of them down there, just battling. There you go. 13th foul of the quarter, and Deja Church is going to come back in. And again, we talk about 5,000 women's basketball right now. Three already in the first two and a half minutes for DePaul. Elmore, what a move inside, but she gets rejected by Church. What a great recovery by Church. Now Church is the trail player in transition over to Bajelka. Stonewall back to Bajelka, blocked by Olesh. Great help defense there by Olesh. Both ends, some rejections on the defensive end. Now the screen for Jackson from Olesh. Elmore with the jab step. Working her way in on Church, back out. Jackson fires a three and hits. Maya Jackson, 17 points off the bench. It's a three-point game. Some role players really stepping up here in the, in the second half of Seton Hall. Stonewall short on the three, Jackson with the board. Coach Bedella wants a set play here. They're going to go horns here. High pick and roll. Jackson to Lewis to tie it. Short. High, pick, high pick and roll, flare screen, great execution. Lewis got the open three, just didn't knock it down. Campbell has the rebound. Seven points, now I believe that's her 10th board of the game. Church. Over to Campbell, but Jelka. Stonewall for a career high, no good. Fight for the rebound, Jackson has it. Two on one if they hurry. Jackson to Smith. Yes and a foul, no. Just the two, off the glass, one point game. Great hockey call, two on one if they hurry, I like it. Seton Hall back in the 2-3 zone. Through the contact, it's a one point game. Campbell for DePaul. All the way over to Morris, who's been hot in the fourth quarter. Walsh is alive right now on campus here in South Orange Church. Short, fight for the rebound. Morris has it and goes right back up with it. Short. Elmore with the rebound for Seton Hall and a chance to take the lead. Seton Hall just slowing it down a little bit. They want to call some set plays here to make sure the right people touch the ball. Jackson's been running the show for Seton Hall and she throws it away. Good deflection by Stonewall. Stonewall to Bajelka. The defense by Lewis, forced back out. Church is wide open and hits a three. How big is that? Deja Church, and it's back to a four point to Paul lead. Church has 13 points. Huge play, big turnover by Seton Hall. They tried to run the same play and hit the slip. DePaul deflects the pass. Aldash. Back out to Jackson. Looking for an Elmore screen. Over to Elmore. Elmore drives with eight to shoot. Smith for three. Off the mark. 
Stonewall boxes out Lewis. Pirates were looking for a foul, not given. Here comes Campbell. Far corner three, but Jelka, pure. And in the blink of an eye, DePaul is back up by seven, and there is a timeout. Huge transition three right there to extend the lead to seven. Again, guys off the bench making plays. But Jelka's first basket of the game. DePaul with a seven point lead, four and a half to go in South Orange on the Big East Digital Network. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We're all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Good one down the stretch here inside Walsh Gym. DePaul leading Seton Hall 78-71 with four and a half to play. Sean St. Jock, Coach Phil Stern, Ashley Liotis here with you on campus in South Orange and taking a look at the upcoming schedule as the season continues in the Big East. Seton Hall on the road at Providence next and obviously a couple other big games there. DePaul hosting Butler and big one in Omaha as well. Creighton hosting the Red Storm. Seems like every game is going to affect the standings down the stretch here in Big East play. Obviously, DePaul continuing to try to battle to keep the number one seed. You have a bunch of teams here trying to get position to be the two and the three seed to stay on the other half of the bracket from DePaul. A big shot there from D. Bakelja going into that last time out, Coach. That was a big shot, and now DePaul has a seven-point lead, four and a half to go. Lauren Park Lane is back in to run the point for Seton Hall. And DePaul has gone smaller now. Took Dahlman out. Switched the ball screen here. Elmore on the block. One on one against Campbell. Good kick. Park Lane thought better of it. Back into Elmore. Fights through a couple of Blue Demons, but misses the shot. Stonewall has the rebound. Interesting Coach Bruno letting, uh, letting Elmore go one on one against their best defender, Campbell. Campbell, the New Jersey native, short on the three. Fight for the rebound, it's tipped out to Jackson. Maya Jackson, 17 points, three of seven from deep. Make it 19 on a scoop to the hoop for two more. Great job, little crossover from the wing. Two dribbles to the basket, lays it in with a left. And Seton Hall stays in the 2-3 zone here. Maya Jackson is Seton Hall's leading scorer, 19 points on the game, seven of 14 from the field. Church for the Blue Demons. Out to Stonewall. Akelja thought about it. Near side, it is a three-point try, and it is too strong. Offensive rebound by Stonewall after Held missed it. Church thought about it. So did Campbell. Good ball move by DePaul. Stonewall, turn around, it's good. 29 points and a new career high for Shante Stonewall. And it's a seven-point lead for the Blue Demons. So impressive. Again, she just shoulder fakes right, gets to the left shoulder, shoots a little turnaround. Difficult shot. Elmore to Samuels, and a foul is called. With DePaul playing a little smaller right now, 
Seton Hall looking to go back inside to Elmore or Samuels, depending on what the matchup is. Fourth team foul on DePaul with 2.57 to play. Pirates trying to win their sixth in their last seven. And DePaul trying to improve to 12 and one at the top of the Big East standings. Samuels dribbled into traffic. Kick out to Elmore. Ball fake, back inside. Samuels, you bet, and a foul. Elmore did a great job. Ball, pass fake to the wing. Strong drive, kick it to Elmore, and one. Another I mean, look kick at it Samuels here. One. What a pass by Elmore that was, huh? And a great finish. Tremendous. Fifth team foul now. And that is the fifth personal foul on Deja Church. She fouls out on that play. So Dee Bakelja is back in for DePaul. There's Church on the bench. She is done for the day for DePaul. She finished in double figures, had a strong game off the bench. DePaul got her some good looks, and now she has to watch the last 246. In and out on the free throw. It stays a five-point game with 2.45 to go. And DePaul has gotten great efforts off the bench from Dahlman and Bakelja tonight. Stonewall double-teamed, dribbled through it, threw one up through the traffic, fight for the rebound. Alexis Lewis has it for the Pirates. Elmore up ahead, wasting no time. No good, though, on the shot, and it's rebounded by Morris. Elmore trying to make something happen there in transition. Good solid defense by DePaul. Pull up jumper, good. Lexi held, knocks it down, and it's back to seven. Second time today she's hit that pull up jumper. It looks really smooth. Did well to get past a couple of Seton Hall defenders and open it up for a 10 footer. Lewis pulls up, that's a two pointer. It is no good, and the rebound to Campbell. Campbell now with seven points and 12 rebounds and in her final homecoming. And you probably don't say this often, but DePaul walks it up the court here against a 2 3, and, and it's a smart thing to do right now. They can use the clock, it's their friend at the moment. Three pointer Morris, too strong. Weak side rebound is tipped out of bounds, it'll stay with DePaul. That's a big second chance play there. And with 1.36 to go and a seven point lead, DePaul will inbound underneath the basket. And again, DePaul just does a great job crashing the offensive boards, going to the opposite side of the court where the shot came from against the zone. Campbell will inbound a shot to Stonewall, 29 points. A little a flex, career high. A little flex action here by DePaul. Partly probably to take a little time off the clock, partly to look for a layup or a down screen. Held with eight to shoot. Stonewall, too strong, fight for the rebound, and it's with Smith for the Pirates. Pirates running out of time, 1.14 to go. Jackson surveying the scene. Over to Samuels. Good ball move by Seat Hall. Stonewall, though, got a hand in the way. 14 seconds on the shot clock. DePaul did a great job right there, doubling the post, making them pass it out, and got a tip on the reversal. Just active hands. Smith to the bench. Lauren Park Lane is back in. Pirates are down seven with 1.02 to play. Into Elmore. Samuels on the drive. To the basket she goes, she is fouled, and two free throws upcoming for Shadeen Samuels. Yeah, just a senior being really aggressive here, trying to take the game in her own hands with a minute to go. One thing that Seton Hall has to keep in mind as well, they only have one team foul, so if they do start to foul, that's gonna really pile up. And DePaul can really try to use the clock when we get to that point, but these two free throws are pretty big at this point in the game. Yep, and look for uh, Seton Hall to come with the one, two, two, three quarter or half court trap right here. DePaul doesn't necessarily have to look the score out of it, just break it and move the ball. Big first free throw from Shadeen Samuels, 18 points for the senior star. Look at Samuels out here after the make with her four fouls. One of two, Stonewall with a big rebound. Pirates trying to ramp things up. Stonewall almost lost that, got it to Campbell, foul by Elmore, and DePaul will inbound side out. And looks like Seton Hall recognized they only have one foul. So they're going to start to play the foul game a little earlier because they have so many fouls to get to before we get to five fouls. Yeah, 
There's still a couple more to give for Seton Hall. Held will inbound. And Samuels can't give one of them here. She has four. So does Alexis Lewis. That's right. Two players with four fouls held on the drive. Stops, pops, misses. That's big for Seton Hall. They get the rebound. Lauren Park lane up ahead. Pirates have to hurry. Coach Bazell, the whole bench, saying you got to get a shot up. Lewis gets one up. In and out. Rebound by Morris. And now the Pirates have to foul again. And they do. Maya Jackson. That is her first personal foul, 29.6 seconds to go, and DePaul is in good shape. And Seton Hall have to, have, have to foul uh, two more times right here. So they'll probably get Jackson, they'll get uh, Lewis and Samuels out. Nope, just Lewis. They gotta give it right away. That's right, Samuels is gonna stay as far away from the action as she can. She cannot foul or she's gonna foul out. And Lewis comes off. Smith back in for the Pirates. Interesting set by DePaul. Right into Stonewall, and Stonewall just waits for the foul, and Jackson gives it with 25.2 seconds to go. I love it. They went four across the baseline. Seton Hall really didn't recognize it, and Stonewall was wide open. Last foul to give there for the Pirates. Stonewall to inbound with 25.2 seconds. Campbell using some clock well and gets fouled. That's a great job to take a couple extra seconds off the clock. And the Wall, New Jersey native, fittingly, will go to the free throw line, a chance to help put this one on ice. And again, now in women's basketball, you could advance the ball under a minute to go. So on a make or miss free throw right here, Seton Hall called timeout, advance the ball, get it in front of their bench, save some time, get to run a set play. Campbell trying to make it a three possession game, and she does. Eight points now for the Wall, New Jersey name, just 53 miles away from South Orange. Also 12 rebounds and six assists. What doesn't she do on the floor? Makes them both. And all of her family and friends that are here to watch her today. You can see all the Campbell shirts behind that DePaul bench over there. They're happy with what they're seeing at the moment. We'll stay right here. 23.1 seconds to go, Coach. You see Coach Doug Bruno always ready to put down the finishing touches on another win. And well, DePaul has done so well on the glass, especially in the second half, 46-24 as far as the rebounding margin is concerned. It got even bigger than it was at halftime, Coach. And Seton Hall, as well as they've played at times in the second half, are starting to run out of time. Yeah, they are. Right now, what they're talking about in the huddles is Seton Hall is going to look for an isolation, probably a, a drive or a post-up. It doesn't have to be a three. And then DePaul, Coach Bruno is talking about not fouling, probably switching everything. And on a rebounder is still getting a timeout so they could advance the ball uh, if they want. Is it too late to just go for a two? Do they have to get a three here? No, I think you got to score. you got to score and play it out because you could advance the ball mm. still. And obviously, Seton Hall now with their fouls would send DePaul to the free throw line. Elmore to inbound. And she throws it away. Had to get it in. And... It's going to be DePaul ball where Elmore just inbounded the ball. That's a crucial turnover in the late stage. Nobody touched it, so it stays in the same spot. DePaul gets it back, and the Pirates will have to foul again. Tried to isolate Samuels there on the block, just didn't execute the pass. Into Morris. And the Pirates will foul with 18 and a half seconds to go. Now, don't be surprised if uh, after these free throws, Coach Bruner doesn't uh, take Campbell out, get her a little uh, standing ovation here for her last time on a college basketball court in the state of New Jersey, her home state. And she's one point away, Coach, from a double-double on her final homecoming game in the Big East. And she's got it. Ten points and 12 rebounds. You can see some shirts, some Kelly Campbell heads, I think, a couple of paper heads out there as well. <laughs> They've really enjoyed watching her play throughout her career, and especially here back home in Jersey. And she'll finish with 11 points and 12 rebounds, although she could get fouled again. We'll have to see. Here's Lauren Park Lane with 15 seconds to play. Lewis the kick out, Jackson will fire up a three. It is no good, Campbell fittingly with the rebound. And she will hand it over to Held, and Held will dribble it out, a valiant effort from the Seton Hall Pirates. But it's the class of the conference that maintains their large lead. DePaul, 14th in the country, improves to 12 and one in the conference, 86 to 76 is the final score. Coach DePaul, after a great effort from Seton Hall, finishes the job strong. Well, first of all, they're right at their average for the year, 86 a game. Uh, 
they do what they do, right? They get on the offensive boards, they make threes, they play fast, and they play hard. Kelly Campbell bides her time to the second half, fills up all the, stat, uh, the, the, the boxes on the stat sheet, throw it inside to Stonewall, Stonewall make a three, Stonewall gets an offensive rebound, does a little bit of everything, but tonight DePaul got a, a great effort off the bench. Great game, DePaul wins it. When we come back, our own Ashley Lyotis will be with the star player from DePaul, Shante Stonewall, after a quick break on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. A big win here at Walsh Gymnasium for DePaul. First of all, congratulations, Shantae. I'm joined by Shantae Stonewall. And this is a hostile environment. You guys were on the road this week in a tough road series. You know, how did you, how were you guys able to get that done inside of this gym today? Um, you know, coach always preaches to us that rebounding and defense travels well. So that's something we really put our uh, mind into, the, into this game, um, knowing that, you know, we both like to play up tempo. So really taking, getting after it on defensive end. And we were just chatting a little bit before coming on for this interview here. Your multiple career highs for you today. Congratulations. 29 points, a new career high for you. What was clicking for you today? Um, my teammates were finding me um, coming back from the St. John's game. I know I didn't finish well, so that was like a, a big, big pillar that I was trying to focus on, finishing around the basket. And then my teammates did a great job finding me, so give credit to them. And, of course, coming into this weekend, you guys were ranked in the projected uh, tournament. A number 14 seed, a top four seed projected in the tournament. Are these are the kind of games that kind of prepare you for March when that comes around? For sure. Um, we know Coach Bruno Bell uh, filled us with a tough non-conference schedule, but, you know, the Big East is nothing to uh, play around with. So this was a great game. Um, like you said, a hostile environment, um, traveling on the road, playing a great Seton Hall team, um, some great defense, some great shooters, um, great all-around players. So this was definitely going to help us in uh, postseason. Perfect. Congratulations and good luck in the future. Let's send it back to you guys. Ashley, Shante, thank you very much. Coach, another thrilling Big East game. Seton Hall fought valiantly throughout. A lot of great performances from Maya Jackson, Shadeen Samuels, Desiree Elmore. But Shante Stonewall's career high 29 and the hometown kid, Kelly Campbell, 11 points, 13 rebounds. They were the difference. DePaul improves to 12 and one in the Big East. And don't forget Kelly Campbell's six assists, by the way. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Gotta get it all in there, of she course. She does it all. She affects the game when she's scoring, when she's not scoring. Stonewall, unguardable in the post, was knocking down shots early from the perimeter. Does a great job getting to the offensive boards. She dominated the game tonight. What a great game for our entire crew. Ashley Lyotis, the coach, Phil Stern. I'm Sean St. Jacques saying so long from South Orange. Number 14, DePaul, defeats Seton Hall. Thank you, as always, for watching, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Beautiful.